Dr. Strangelove, do we have anything like that in the works? A moment, please, Mr. President. Dr. Strangelove is about how the United States and Russia, through a series of misunderstandings and actions by certifiably crazy people, almost come to the brink of nuclear war. Now then, Dimitri, you know how we've always talked about the possibility of something going wrong with the bomb. You know, as a comedy person, there was comedy before Dr. Strangelove and after Dr. Strangelove because no one had seen anything that dry. The satire of it, in order to do it right, you had to do it completely straight. Of course I like to speak to you. Of course I like to say hello. On the surface, it was not supposed to scare anybody because it was a comedy, when in fact it's not a comedy. The film really, really takes you to the end of the world. Gentlemen, you can't fight in here. This is the war room. Peter Sellers was unbelievable as every character, but especially as Dr. Strangelove. <laughs> Peter Sellers is what makes that film sing, that you can feel that Stanley Kubrick has somebody that he trusts to go completely off the rails and that he knows how to film it and contain it and use it for the purposes of the story. The whole point of the doomsday machine is lost. If you keep it a secret, why didn't you tell the world, eh? When I first saw the film, I came out of that movie fearing uh, nuclear war with the Russians more than I ever had before. But I got a pretty fair idea that something doggone important is going on back there. Stanley Kubrick was one of the most audacious filmmakers in history. Well, boys, I reckon this is it. Nuclear combat toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Ruskies. Who else would have Slim Pickens in a cowboy hat getting on an atomic bomb and riding it all the way to the ground, waving his hat over his head like he's at a rodeo? and it delivers Armageddon in song. With every single hydrogen bomb explosion ever photographed, cut together in sync, in harmony with the music. Don't know where, don't know where. 